Hopefully I don't lose it before we finish. <clears throat> All right, if you will look at this, you need to remember what we just covered yesterday. A couple of different random things. The first is L and V is the value one. You need to know that. That makes life so much easier. Anytime you see L and V, now you can replace it with a one. Um, just LN itself, just LN, not the of something, but just LN stands for log base E, okay? Um, so that's something to keep in mind because sometimes you might want to change it to the other one to make life easier. The other thing you need to remember, like right here, let me explain what this is. This is log form, right? And then this is exponential form. Now the little arrow here is just saying, so x must be 3. That's really not that relevant, but just know how to go between one form to the other. If you're in log form, know how to convert to exponential. If you're in exponential, know how to convert to log. All you have to memorize is what, is what I said yesterday. The base of the log is the base of the exponent, and the other two values, if, you, if you'll do it the way that I do it, where my log's on the left, my exponent stuff's on the left, and then the other two values switch, and when they switch, the one that comes over next to the new base needs to go up to the exponent's base, okay? So what we're getting at is being able to solve log equations or exponential equations. And in order to be able to solve those equations, you've got to learn the properties of logs, the powers, products, quotients, um, multiple, that's it, rules. Powers, products, and quotient rules. Um, it's kind of like, You know, like when you have um, x to the fourth over, say, x to the third, and because the bases match, you would take the smaller exponent and you would move it to the higher one and it, you subtract them. You know that rule? Um, the same way that we take that and rewrite it based on the rule that we've learned from exponents. We're fixing to learn some rules with logs, okay? You have this chart on this slide right here. You're going to want a highlighter and a colored pen, and then, of course, your pencil. So I'm going to show you the properties. I'm going to show you the properties and then I'm going to um, show you examples of it, okay? And then we will practice. We have one, two, three, four, five examples. One of those examples just got repeated because there wasn't going to be enough room. Um, so we have five examples. Okay. All right, so let's look at this. The way I organized it is, if you recall some exponent properties, like the product rule, the power rule, now I'm going to show you the log property. So this column is what you already know. This column is the new part. And then this column is where we're going to see it in action, okay? So recall the product rule of exponents. If I have some base to a power and then the same base to a power and then you have multiplication, you do what with the exponents? You add them. Okay, so for example, if I had, say, 2 cubed times 2 squared, if I wanted to condense that, I would write 2 to the 5th power. 
And if you forget that, you would just think to yourself, well, there's three of them here, there's two of them there, so how many are there total? There's five total. So you just add it, right? Okay, well with logs, it's very similar. If I have a log of a base, and then the product, this is saying M, let's put parentheses around it, this is saying M times N, then you can write it out in what's called expanded form. And the expanded form, this is saying like this chunk of log expression here can be written out in expanded form to be the same log and base of the first value plus the same log and base of the second value. So the multiplication in expanded form translates to addition, or vice versa. If you have it in expanded form as addition and you want to condense it, it translates to multiplication. So you need to, in your mind, associate multiplication and addition go together. Okay, that's what you need to think to yourself. So if it's in expanded, I'm going to condense it to multiplication. If it's in condensed, I'm going to expand it to addition. All right. So what I want you to do is to notice with your highlighter that this is log base A and it gets repeated. The only part that you have to actually um, you know separate and manipulate is the of part. It's in Oh, did you get it? No. Wait, not for that. No, that's fine. Yeah, did somebody have an extra by chance? No, that's not. So what is it? Is it five? It's five four. It's five four. I might have that. Boom that out. I I want you to understand that the log base whatever. It's kind of like one of those blocks that's got that painted on the front. Because you just repeat that. It's the of part that you're manipulating. Okay? You'll notice the log base A stays the same uh, throughout the whole thing. So the multiplication expands to addition. All right? Now come over here and let's practice. We're going to go in both directions. This Make sure you understand the directions because that really helps you to know how what you're supposed to do. Express as a sum of logs, which means sum means we're adding. So we should have a log plus a log. If they're telling you right there, they want it in expanded form. Expanded form means it's singular. Um, nothing is like condensed at all. So let's look at it. We have log base 3. This is the of 9 times 27. They want it in expanded form. So what's my, I'm going to say yellow block. What's my yellow block? Log base 3. What's the first of? Okay. And then multiplication becomes addition. What's my yellow block? Of. Now, it didn't say solve it, so we could stop here. Now, if you were trying to practice in your head, you know, these logs understanding it, let's look at it. This means 3 to some power is 9. Okay. 3 to what power is 9? 2, 3 squared is 9, right? I'm just going to write an arrow. So that would be 2. And then 3 to what power is 27? Three. So the answer there is actually five. It didn't ask you to clean it up. I just want you to keep practicing understanding what a log is. Okay? This is the answer. Writing it out in expanded form. Now let's go in reverse. Express a single logarithm. And here's the expression they give me to work with. If the, like the mass 
everything in there is uh, confusing to you, take your highlighter and highlight the log and the base so that you can actually see the of part to know what's going to be condensed here. And by the way, the bases do have to match. If that had been like log base 5 there, then we couldn't do anything. Um, so the bases have to match. All right, so I, I can write this as a single logarithm, base 2. And I like to put parentheses when I have multiple things so that I can remember there's multiple things there. The of part's PQ. The addition becomes multiplication, and the other of is Q. more complicated is there's just more logs in the problem. And the easiest way to tackle that is in the order that you read it, one at a time, okay? Let's go to the next rule. It's called the power rule. This plot is showing what you already know. If you have some base with an exponent raised to a power, the way you clean that up is you multiply the powers. And the way that I've always reminded people of that is to think that the parentheses that is right here, parentheses means multiplying that, right? So I always tell mine to think of that parentheses reminding you that, hey, you're just going to multiply those together. For example, what if we had, um, what did I do? I did 2 cubed raised to the second power. Now up here we had 2 cubed times 2 squared, and it cleaned up to be 2 to the fifth. This is 2 cubed squared, which means you have 2 cubed and 2 cubed, so how many are there? There's actually 6 of them. Okay, so the exponent rule for powers is when a power is raised to a power, or in this case, I say raised to a power, but if you have a if you have a base and a power, and then that is raised to another power, then the, you clean it up by multiplying. Okay, in logs, it looks a little different, but it's the same concept. I have an exponent right here. Okay, we're going to take that exponent and we're going to write it as multiplying times the entire log. I always draw an arrow. So let's, let's look at what we have here. We have log base A, and then of M to the P power. Then over here we have log base A. Where did P go? It went to the front, because here's the rule. Any power at the very end of the log expression comes to the front right here and is just multiplied by the whole thing. So, for example, and this is actually... Um, I think this was in 5-3 homework. I have a note that says 5-3 homework. Uh, let's do log base 3 of 3 to the 1 6th power. Two ways to do this. Using the power rule, you would say to yourself, I'm going to change the thickness of my marker so it doesn't bother, it doesn't blend in. That's going to multiply to right here in the front, right? So I would end up with 1 over 6 times log base 3 of 3. What's log base 3 of 3? 1. So what's the answer here if I said clean it up all the way? It would be 1 6 times 1, which is 1 6. All right.
right, so let's let's look at it over here in practice. It says express each of the following as a product. When it says this right here, that means they want you to have some value in the front times the log itself, okay? So some number times the log expression is what they mean by express it as a product. All right, so look at the first one. We've got log base A of 11 raised to the negative 3 power. So the negative 3 is the power at the very tail end. It's going to come right here. So this would be negative 3 log base A of 11. That makes sense? Don't let the next one throw you off. Change the radical to a rational exponent. So remind yourself, a rational exponent, the denominator of the fraction is the root of the radical. So let's rewrite this. This is actually log base A of what? Of 7. And then this is a fourth root of 7 to the first power. So the fraction would be 1 over 4. Right? Remember that the root is the bottom of the fraction because roots go in the ground. So now I can, I can do the power rule. And the power rule, I like to draw the arrow to remind me, okay, send it to the front. So this is going to go right here. So it's going to be one-fourth. It's going to be one-fourth times log base A of 7. Now the next one's an ln because I wanted you to make sure you understand that this all still applies to ln. Even though ln is a lot cleaner, don't don't forget that ln um, is the same has the same product rule, power rule. So this is ln of x to the six. So the six is going to move. And it's going to be 6 times ln x. Now, what's the only thing we haven't done? We've, we've added, we've multiplied, we haven't subtracted. The quotient rule. Okay, this was the one that I said on the very first slide in green when I was like, hey, remember x to the fourth roots over x to the third? You take the smaller exponent and move it to the big one and you subtract them. That's this. Um, so let's put an example. For example, if we had, say, we're going to do two examples here, so don't write big. We're going to do one here and one here. If we had... Um, 2 cubed over 2 squared. Because the smaller exponent's in the bottom, that mess would move to the top, and it would be 2 cubed minus 2 in the exponent, right? Which would be just 2, correct? Okay, what if they were switched? So here's where the second example comes in. Um, we have 2 squared over 2 cubed. You're going to take the smaller exponent and you're going to move it to the larger one. So in this case, it goes to the bottom, which leaves an understood 1 on top. Right? And so my answer here is 1 half. So look at the difference between those two. Now, the good news is with logs, you don't have to worry about which one's the smaller, which one's the larger. It's just a matter of division and subtraction are related. Okay, so going back to the last slide, addition and multiplication are related. Exponents and multiplying it to the front are related. And then now having a fraction 
and then expanding it to subtraction are related. Okay, so let's do our highlighter. We've got log base A of M divided by N log base A of M divided by N that is that whole thing right there if you want to put in parentheses you can that is your fraction that's what you're fixing to work with and manipulate We're going to manipulate it by writing it out in expanded form. And the way that I remember this is as silly as, oh, the fraction bar means I'm fixing to subtract. That's how I remind myself that the fraction expands to subtraction. Now, order does matter. Whatever's on top needs to go first, and whatever's on bottom needs to go second. Okay? So I guess you should make a note that order matters. But you should naturally write the top first and the bottom second, but just in case. Okay, so let's practice both directions with this. This says express as a difference of logs. Difference means subtract. So they're telling you that they want log minus log. Okay, it helps to recognize the log base so that you know that that's not what you're manipulating. You're manipulating the of part. So we're fixing to um, expand the 8 over W. Okay, so I'm going to put one seat around it. Maybe that looks bad. Okay, so I'm going to write log base T of 8 minus log base T of W. All right, you do the next one. It's going in the reverse. It's in expanded form. They want you to condense it to one log. And then what is 64 divided by 16? 4. So you could say 4 log base B of 4. A couple of common mistakes, and I have them copied right here. The most common one, let's, so let's just look at it. Um, notice right here. This was multiplication, and then it says does not equal. This is still multiplication. So if you are, if you're manipulating it and you still have the same operation that was already there, then you didn't manipulate it correctly. Remember, multiplication switches with addition. That's what you need to remember, multiplication and addition. And the way I remember that is multiplication sign, addition sign. You know, just, it's just an X term. And then you need to remember that um, power, like exponent, moves to the front and becomes coefficient. That's what you need to remember. Um, and then you need to remember that if you have a fraction, it's going to expand to subtraction. They rhyme. Fraction and subtraction. So that's how I remember that. Um, another common mistake, look right here, this one. This says log base A of M, but then the entire thing is raised to P. That is different than what we did. When we were moving that power to the front as a coefficient, it was because it was attached to the of part, right? This is not attached to the of. 
this is attached to the whole dang thing, which means write that log p number of times. So make sure to pay attention to what the power is attached to. Okay, I don't really know that that comes up. Maybe one time, but so that's just a heads up. All right, let's practice. This slide has three practice problems on it. There, there is a lot of writing, um, like A takes three lines, B takes four lines. So I actually took this example and I moved it to the next slide. So it's copied, you'll notice. So JK, all right, well then we'll just make it fit. Okay. Ooh, and it's all attached. Okay, well then, so just make sure you're not writing too big if we're going to squeeze all this on it. Or what you might want to do is maybe just block that one out and come over here and create another line or you can write it somewhere else. All right, let's look at the first one. We have log base A of x squared y to the fifth all over z to the fourth. I like to emphasize my log and base because my expression is fixing to have that log and base repeated over and over and over, right? Now I can actually see what I'm working with here. Notice the direction say express each of the following in terms of sums and differences, which means get it out in expanded form. There should be nothing being multiplied, like of times of, nothing multiplied. There should be no fractions. If there's a power, it should be pulled to the front, okay? So look at this. We've got of x squared y to the fifth all over z to the fourth. The first thing you need to break up is the fraction, all right? So what's, what is being subtracted here? And it's exactly what you see. Like, tell me what's being subtracted. The x squared y to the fifth minus c to the fourth. Okay. Now, when you say that in your head, you need to also put the logs there when you go to write it. Okay. So I'm going to break the fraction up first. So, and I'm actually going to bump up here so we don't have too much crowded. So log base a. Now, since there's a lot in that top, I'm going to put it in parentheses. x squared y to the fifth minus log base a z to the fourth. Now you're just going to work through it one thing at a time from left to right, okay? Um, right here, we have log base A of x squared times y to the fifth. We need to break the times apart into addition. So that would be log base A of what first? x squared, what are right now? Plus, there you go. Now over here, we didn't do anything, we got a minus sign. What can I do with that um, last log? What can I do with it? Yeah, you need to bring the 4. You need to bring that 4 down to the front of that expression as a coefficient, right? So I'm going to draw an arrow, and I'm going to bring it right there to the front. So that's 4. Oh, I didn't want to be cursing. 4 log base A of Z. So that one's done. That last one's done now. Because there's no power. There's it, how do you know when you're done with it? The of part should be a singular thing. Okay? It shouldn't have multiple letters, it shouldn't have any powers. Um, that's how you know that that last log is done. These are not done. What needs to happen? Both of those exponents need to come to the front. This needs to come here. I like to draw the arrow, but I've said that to remind myself how to do it. So this is actually 2 log 
base a of x plus 5 log base a of y minus 4 log base a of z. Not bad, tedious, right? Very meticulous. You just have to you have to go through it slowly, one thing at a time. Okay. All right. Let's do the next one. This one's a little bit. It has four lines, or maybe five lines. So when you look at it, once again, I'm going to take my highlighter and highlight my block that's going to get repeated. And I do that so it kind of takes that thinking away. I don't have to worry about what the log and the base are because I see it right there. It's going to get repeated every time. Now I can see the of part. I really can't work with this yet because I don't know exactly what I'm looking at because I have a giant square root or a cube root over the whole thing. So the first thing you would need to do is rewrite that without the radical. You want it as a rational exponent. So I'm going to write log base A, I'm putting really big parentheses. Now what needs to go in the parentheses? A squared B. A squared, that, that fraction that's under the radical, it goes in the parentheses. And then now the cube root becomes what power One in the third. exponent? One third. What's the one-third attached to? It's attached to the of, which means it comes to the front as a, as a one-third coefficient, right? So I'm going to, so that we don't run out of room, I'm just going to keep row going out instead of underneath it. So this one-third is going to come right here, right, times the log of a or log base A of this mess. Now, here's where you have to be careful, and this does come up, I think, in a couple of problems. You've just pulled an exponent to the front as a coefficient of a giant expression. So that coefficient is going to be there now along to the right it's now part of like your block. Does that make sense? Because this is saying one third times log base A of this crap. So when I go and I expand this stuff, there's two ways to do it. You can either remember that the one third is in the very front and at the very, very end, you would have to multiply the one third through or you can just carry the one-third with you, like paint it as the new block, and it's going to be there every time. So it's up to you. What do you think y'all want to do? That's what I'm thinking. Carry it with you, because I've seen people forget at the very end. If you, if you left it here, you would have to, like, you expand your logs, and then at the very end, you'd have to remember that the one-third is there. And a lot of times I've seen people forget that part. So... Let's just treat it as our new block. It's along for the ride. Don't, don't complicate things. Let's look at this. This is what we have to break apart. We've got a squared times b all over c to the fifth. Just like over here. Break your fraction up first. So this would break apart into what minus what? minus one-third log A of C to the fifth, right? So let's break that up. Um, I'm just going to come over here. So we got one-third log base A of A squared B, that was the top, minus one-third log base A of C to the fifth. And I'm going to, I probably should have highlighted that in green. I'm going to highlight it in green 
since it's now, you know, changed, it's going along for the ride. Did you see AirPods on that table when you sat down? So they had been all the months since December 8th. It's like the winter. It's the 13th. So far, guys. Did you just see this picture? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't see him. I sat down. No, did he? Who? Mississippi State head coach. Huh? He was only 61 years old. Oh, yeah, he was so not old at all. <clears throat> okay, um, you try it because it, it, it's the same thing from this. It's just you got that one third in the front. It's the same thing. You have the one third in the front. Now, when you go to move those powers to the front as a coefficient, it will multiply with the one third, which means it's just multiplying with. It's almost right when you because one third times two would be two thirds, and they take one third times five and make it five thirds. Once you write that, once you write that, you would have it right. Yes. I got five and twelve. Rewrite this whole thing 
but right here becomes what? Two thirds. And now it's done. Yes. So you don't. Uh, so you don't need to simplify the two thirds one thirds. No. No. When it says to express it, it's just looking for conversion. Don't solve. But you're right to think that log base a of a here is actually one. But they don't want you to do that. Yeah. Break the fraction apart. So tell me, in the of, what's actually being subtracted here? To the fifth. Exactly. Let's write it out. All right. Log base B of, and I'm gonna, whenever the of has more than one thing, I put it in parentheses because that visual will. Q tells me I still have to work with this. I need my, you know you're done when it's of just a single thing. All right, what do you say? Minus log base B of, what was it? M cubed n to the fourth. Okay. We have something here that has not happened yet. Nope. Well, the minus sign here has after it something that it has to expand as well, right? Like, if you come back up here, after the minus sign was just a single log. We just had to pull a number to the front. Um, after the this minus, right here. After the minus sign, you just had a single log that had an exponent to pull to the front. This is new. This is after the minus sign, we have a log of multiple things still. Which means there's going to be a negative that has to be distributed. Right, within parentheses, but then you got that negative that's going to distribute. So the way that I did it was I went to addition first. Because there was a lot here, I kept it in parentheses so that I could see that I needed to distribute. So I'm going to turn to red, um, and I'm going to put an arrow, and I'm going to say careful. Well, don't start in the back. Always start to the front. Like, work your way one thing at a time. Okay, so right here. This is multiplication, so this separates into... Addition with your little log base B, right? So we've got log base B of A plus log base B of Y to the fifth. 
This is multiplication, this expands to addition, just like that one did. But because it's coming right after this minus sign, you need, I'm going to put brackets so it stands out. You need to remember that that minus sign has to distribute at some point. So this would be log base B of M cubed plus log base B of N to the fourth. Because the other one didn't have, it was singular. Alright, so what can I do here with this one? This one here. It's done. What about this one? Move the 5 to the front. Move what I said. Just work your way one thing at a time from left to right. So the 5 will come to the front here. So I'm going to go ahead and come here and start writing. This has to distribute to these, right? You also have powers that have to do what? Oh, you're on. These powers have to go to the front. I'm going to do the powers first, and then I'm going to distribute last. So I'm just going to leave this as minus, and then the bracket. This would be 3 log base B of M plus 4 log base B of N. What's the only thing left to do? No. Distribute those that negative one right here to those two. Actually, the next example, well, no, that's more intense, too. All right, let's go to the last two examples. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, go to the next one. Wait. Wait. Oh. So now wait. No five four four. I don't do all the pumps. I don't do all the pumps. Yeah. Are y'all, y'all got it? Yes. Okay. Go to this slide. Stay with me. Um, Express is a single logarithm. 
This is the reverse. You gotta reverse, reverse. So this time it's in expanded form, and the goal is to get it down to just log base. What base? Log base B of, of something, okay? There should be no coefficients in the front either. Um, so let's look at this. We're going to go through this um, one step at a time. I personally, I approach the coefficients first, and I move them to the exponents, okay? Yes, now we're going in reverse. You do need to verify that the log and the base match, because if they ever don't match, if the logs if the base does not match, then you cannot condense it. So these do match. So the goal is to have a single log at the end. I'm going to pull the 5 to right here. So this would be log base B of x to the 5th. The middle one, can I do anything with it in terms of coefficients? No, so I'm just going to copy it. This is going to go here, right? What is that? The one fourth is going to go um, to the Z. Okay, now you have to think to yourself radical and rational exponents. So if it's Z to the one fourth, that's actually what root? The fourth root of Z. So when I write this, I'm going to write log base B of the fourth root of Z. How can you write? Just let me, I, one thing at a time. One thing at a time. Left to right, by the way. Left to right. All right, so looking at this, there's a lot going on here. We're going to focus, when I draw these two lines, that's me saying I'm going to focus on these two, and then that last one's coming down to the right, and then I'll get those two, okay? So looking at these two, you've got your log base B, log base B. So look at the of part. The of is condensing. It's subtraction, so it's going to condense to a, what rhymes with subtraction? A fraction. So this would be log base b of x to the fifth over y. Now this comes down. Now we have matching log bases, we have of this plus this plus condenses to multiplication. Um, so we're going to write this as a single log. What base? B. We definitely have a fraction here, so I'm going to put it in really big parentheses. When you condense x to the fifth over y with the fourth root of z, and you're condensing it with multiplication, visualize to yourself, this is understood to be over 1. So it's just going to show up right next to that numerator. So it's going to be x to the fifth, the fourth root of z, all over y. Okay. Let's do this last problem, and then y'all can leave. Ln of 3x plus 1 minus ln of this quadratic. It says express it as a single logarithm. Well, ln and ln, those are your blocks, right? Look at the of. I've got of this minus of this. What's minus condensed to? Subtraction condenses to a fraction. So this is going to be... I'm going to draw arrows to show that I'm condensing that. This is ln of 3x plus 1 over 3x squared minus 5x minus 2. Now, while that is the answer, 
it is not cleaned up. So what I want you to do, I challenge you to clean this up. What do you think the bottom's going to do? Bottom's going to factor. Mm -hmm. So let's see, three times negative two. It's negative six. Factors of negative six that add up to negative five. Be careful here. Two and three work and six and one work, but you have to play with them to see the signs. Which one actually works? Got to multiply, give me negative six, add, give me negative five. There you go. Now, is A one? No, which means something's going to reduce, right? So I don't really want to jump back in here and reduce it over here because that's going to confuse me. I'm going to reduce it over here. So remember that fraction shortcut. It's AX and then the number. So AX, one of the numbers, and then AX and the other number. And then you look at them and you ask yourself, which one reduces? Like, which one has a GCF that would divide away? And that would be this one. What would it be? Divide a 3 out and write what you get. What do you get when that divides by 3? You get X minus 2, and then this one just comes down. All right, so I'm going to rewrite this. So this is actually ln So what cancels? Yep. What's left on top then? A 1. And that's the answer. Now, I don't really know that that happens ever again, but that problem's there to show you it can happen. I've gone into 5-4 and I've removed some of the homework problems that are not um, relevant. I think it's the majority of them are, do you know how to convert it? There's, I think, 11 problems or 10 problems. We're still coming back.